Good afternoon, I'm Sarah Ellsworth Hoffman. Welcome to this week's episode of The Goldie Show. Our host Goldie firmly believes that everyday people are worth more than gold. The main focus of The Goldie Show is to talk with people who are making a difference in a positive way here in our community and in our world. Today our host is joined by Stephen Manning, founder and CEO of Manning Video Productions, LLC. He will discuss how he overcame his struggles with mental illness and how he became a successful business owner. Hi, welcome to Goldie Show. I have Mr. Stephen Manning here with me. How are you, Mr. Stephen? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show, Goldie. It's an honor. After what research I've done and background, it is a great pleasure to have you here. Let's start off with Mr. Stephen. Could you take me back to where you started, where you from, and where we are going to go? Well, I'm originally from Fort Wayne. Okay. And um, I'm from a, somewhat of a large family, three brothers and three sisters. Um, graduated from Elmhurst High School, mm -hmm. have a degree, uh, a bachelor's degree in radio, television, film from Indiana University. Uh, worked at uh, WBCL Radio for a while, then went to Access TV. And then uh, when I worked at Public Access Television, uh, I was hit with uh, severe uh, mental illness, bipolar disorder, and uh, that time period in my life was extremely traumatic for me. Um, prior to that time, I was doing well, you know, pretty good job, um, good relationship with family and friends and, and, and with God. When but you say you got hit with the mental illness, did you see it coming or it just came all of a sudden? You know, it, it progressively, you know, it, it was a progression. Uh, I wake, woke up in the morning and initially I got like just the jitters. Oh, wow. A little bit of shakes. Mm -hmm. Didn't think that was anything. Okay. And then I started to feel like a heaviness. Um, kind of felt like just kind of a weight in my head. Mm -hmm and on my shoulders, kind of kind of feeling down, and uh, things got worse. Eventually, um, I lost my appetite, mm. uh, and the heaviness, which was the depression, uh -huh. the sadness, mm -hmm. got a whole lot worse. Um, I uh, discovered at work I would just sit there at my desk with the shakes, and um, couldn't get to sleep at night. There were, I, I, there, I went for several days without sleep and then still got up, just laying in the bed without sleeping, got up in the morning, went to work. Things got horrible. And um, I can recall after about seven months of going through that, I, I took some pills and put them in my hand and I called which is what is now BPH, okay. Behavioral Parkview Behavioral Health. It now, was, what kind of pills did you take? I don't know what kind of pills they were. I can't remember, but I just took some pills, and I called PBH, and I said, my name is Stephen Manning, mm -hmm. and I've got a bunch of pills in my hand, and if you don't come and get me right now, I'm going to take all these pills. What age was that, approximately? I was approximately... Uh, 38 years old. Wow. So they said, Mr. Manning, don't take the pills. We'll come and get you. Okay. So they came and got me, and that was my very first um, experience uh, of going to the hospital with a mental illness. Oh, wow. Uh, it didn't stop there. It got mm -hmm. worse. And um, uh, over a 12-year period, uh, the mental illness got so bad that at my worst, uh, I... Uh, had about five attempts to take my life. Uh, at one particular time, I was uh, homeless. Homeless? Homeless, and with no job, no money, no place to stay. So. Uh, How did you deal with that, you know, mental, mental illness, homeless? I mean, what were you going through? That was a good question because it, there's a, I dealt with it in a variety of ways, you know. Uh, my illness, is bipolar disorder so okay. 
if anyone knows about bipolar yes. disorder, you go from lows, mm -hmm. which is your depression, depressive state, to highs, they call it a manic mania, yes. where you're just on top of the world and you're invincible and you're just doing great and nothing can harm you. So I was, I was experiencing, experiencing those lows and highs. So it was basically, it was just a whole game of uh, routine of uh, survival, you know. Um, some nights staying in hotels after, you know, begging for money and people giving me money. Some uh, nights staying with family or some nights staying with friends. So you were not mm -hmm. only having problem with mental illness, but you were homeless, you were begging. How did that make you feel with all those things going on in life? as a person? It was hard at that particular time to be in touch with my feelings. Um, as I mentioned, I was going through a mania phase, so a lot of the times I felt great, actually. I just felt like, wow, this is an adventure, <laughs> this is great. You know, and uh, one of the funny things I did is, uh, actually people, I, I would dress up. I would look like a business person and would ha wear different ties, and I can re recall someone, people saying, some guys saying, uh, I like that tie. I would take off the tie at that moment and give it to them. <laughs> Just because they said it. Yeah, <laughs> so that was my little, um, I guess, M.O. <laughs> but um, that was funny, and, and, and um, I, I can recall riding a bicycle around town, and people were saying, Stephen, I saw you riding a bicycle. I would ride from the north side to the south side of Fort Wayne on the bicycle, and um, so there were a lot of things that I did that were out of the norm and people, a lot of people, my friends now say, I knew there was something wrong with you because you were acting very strange. Um, of course, you know, when you're dealing with homelessness and no money and all this, it, 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 it um, opened the door for me to act strangely. You know, of course I was suffering from the mania aspect were of Were you married then or no? disorder. Wasn't married then, not married now, okay. but was not married. Didn't have any responsibility uh, in terms of children and uh, family. So I think that was a good thing mm -hmm. um, because uh, I don't think how, I don't know how I would have dealt with. With the family, with, and, with children. family and children. Now where time. was your you know, parents or brothers or father, did they ever care? My family uh, were right here in Fort Wayne. Okay. They live in Fort Wayne, we're from Fort Wayne. But, you know, I, I kind of separated myself from them, okay. distanced myself from them. And I can relate to family not knowing how to deal with a family member with a mental illness. Okay. So uh, members of my family probably intentionally stayed away or because they didn't really know what was going on or how to deal with me. And uh, so... Uh, but did they acknowledge you as their son or a family member? They did. You know, when I was hospitalized a couple of times, my... my uh, family and her, uh, one particular sister and her children came and visited me but still they you know uh, they didn't know how to what questions to ask or how to deal with me or you know wasn't really um, um, didn't know like I said how to relate or handle the situation or handle the situation Wow so, so you, did you ever come out of that mental illness or what really changed your status I'll tell you the one thing that really changed for me is when um, I became a member of the Fort Wayne Carriage House. Okay. And Carriage House Clubhouse, the Clubhouse Movement, is an uh, organization that helps uh, men and women with serious mental illness, helps to rehabilitate them in a, in a very unconventional way. It's quite different from the mental centers approach, the medical model we call it. So the Carriage House in Fort Wayne, I became a member and started attending regularly. And the Clubhouse movement focuses on a person's talents, skills and abilities rather than to focus on the illness. So rather than sit ar sitting around in group talking about the illness, uh, the Clubhouse movement uh, works in what is called um, a work-ordered day. They say what talent or the strength you have. Yes. 
and all the work that's done at the clubhouse mm -hmm. is work to keep the clubhouse going. Okay. So we don't really talk about the illness or, you know, I'm struggling with this and uh, why don't we do basket weaving to help us forget about. No. So that the, the carriage house clubhouse movement helped me uh, tr in a tremendous way to get in touch with my talent, skills and abilities and to move forward um, even with my illness. So in a 10 year period, I was able to get like a temporary job mm -hmm. through the, the That's clubhouse good. movement. That's fantastic. I was able to finish my master's degree wow. in education with their encouragement and um, uh, with their support. And also I was able to uh, hone my skills in video production and direction and wow. editing because mm -hmm. we started an in-house video production um, unit where we did two in-house television shows wow. and I became the lead producer. So that right there was extremely helpful to me in even getting to where I am right now as a president and CEO of Manning Video Productions LLC. Which so is, is this, your card? this is my card right here, Manning Video Productions LLC, which it, and it, people love the design and it's it looks very simple <laughs> yes and it really is great so this is manning video productions llc and you are the ceo and founder of i'm that? president ceo and we're currently right now sitting in a, um, a location at the northeast indiana innovation center where my my office and office slash studio is located okay so i've been here uh, a little over a year Wonderful. and the company is doing extremely well um, it's growing uh, steadily uh, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication but I love every moment of it and w we produce a wide range of videos uh, TV commercials um, you might have uh, have seen a couple of our TV commercials recently we did the commercial for Sharon Tucker's uh, yep. political campaign we currently have um, a commercial running for a, a business called Consign Design in Time Corners. Oh wow! Uh, which is a very high-end um, consignment store. Um, that that commercial is running. We do uh, music videos, mm. weddings, short motion pictures, promotional videos, videos for memorials for loved ones, uh, videos for uh, websites. Yeah, a wide range. I hope you're enjoying Goldie's interview with Stephen Manning. In case you just tuned in, I'm Sarah Ellsworth Hoffman and you're watching a brand new program here called The Goldie Show. The Goldie Show is a half hour treat with our host, Goldie, interviewing people from different walks of life who are making a positive difference in our community. You can see The Goldie Show every Thursday afternoon at one o'clock. You can connect with The Goldie Show by checking us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and on our website, goldieshow.com. Now let's get back to the show with Goldie and Stephen Manning take you back to the carriage house when you finally find out for yourself who you are and what your strength is did you go on to move on to your own self and doing your stuff yes I did and, and what happened was um, as I was working on the in-house video for the clubhouse a couple of people namely Park Center asked me well could you do <laughs> And I'm a client, I was a client of Park Center, and they said, Stephen, do you think you could do a video for us? We'll pay you. And I thought, sure. So um, it was interesting that after being a client uh, of Park Center, they became my client <laughs> in the video production. And, and they were very happy with, with my work, and we went on to do uh, a second and even a third video project. Wow. That's cool. um, so I was extremely happy with that, and then someone else asked Stephen, uh, "Would you uh, could you uh, do a video for us, and we'll pay you?" Sure. So um, it would it didn't take me long to think. Wait a minute, you know, um, I'm producing videos for people, and they're paying me. This could be a business. So. Um, so you started your business. I started the business. It was about three years ago, and then um, eventually I thought, you know, well. I think I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have to get out of the clubhouse, the, the actual carriage house clubhouse building. And after deciding that, and actually Andy Wilson, the executive director of the carriage house, helped me 
to make those decisions and those choices and you know um, and that's extremely important because you know when you're going through something like that you need someone to say yeah you can do it you can do it and and how are we gonna do this um, so that's where the carriage house was extremely helpful in directing me and encouraging me and you know I, I there's one particular story I have where I had told uh, Andy that I wanted to, to win the Academy Award at one time. Very high and lofty goal. Very yes, high and lofty. Yes. So I told him that one time and then so one day we were sitting at a table telling our goals and I said, oh I just want to be, I just want to be uh, a successful producer and Andy was over in the corner and said, wait a minute Stephen, you said you wanted to win an Academy Award. <laughs> just like I wanted to walk the red carpet. And, and then I said, oh yeah you're right. See and you know you need people like that. Yes. To, to remind you, remind you, and redirect you, and also that says, "I'm here for you. Go for it. I'm here for you." The carriage house, in so many ways, and Andy, in his friendship, and all the members and staff, in so many ways that I can't even express, have been so helpful and instrumental in me being here right now. And I always tell people that the carriage house is a gift of God. Yes, it's a gift from God to me. Because I'll tell you, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for yeah. their support in every kind of way. Now, when you moved on and you became so successful with your company, with your you know productions and commercial shooting and all, did your family come back and approach you? Well, you know, yes, my my family. Um, because they left you. Yeah. Because they didn't know how to handle right. you. And now they do. It took them a while to come around and think whoa you know you're successful uh, we we really uh we're really impressed we love you and it, it was good you know and, and one thing that really um helped them to to know that i was um um serious i i got this uh master's degree diploma oh, wow. last year for ipfw and what happened with my master's program is when i got sick uh, you know, you have to complete your master's program within six years or uh, they reevaluate. So I never thought I would, would go back to school. Science so when I was ready, I called them up and said, you know, can I start back up? And they said, oh, yeah, Mr. Manny, you can start back up. But, and I had one class left. I had one class Still. left when I got sick. When I got sick, I got I had okay. one class left. But because I didn't finish it in six years, they said, Mr. Manny, yeah, you can come back, but we've calculated that you have to take, now you have to take eight classes. And you know what, I wasn't upset, I said, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready. So I, I uh, yeah, I was That's able fantastic. to, to um, finish the master's degree. That's, what I think, when my family and other people really thought, wow, well, really knew that I was serious. Uh -huh. You know, you can start a business and it's impressive, but when I tell people that I finished a master's degree, then they go, oh, really? You know, the education seems to outweigh the business ownership in some kind of way because, you know, yes. dozens of times I've, I've told people, I have my own business, oh, that's good. Oh, and I finished my master's. Oh, really? Yeah, especially what you've been through and what you've accomplished. Now the illness is gone for good or did you take medication? Of course you told me, but did you have any side effects or having side effects? I've not had any symptoms since 2008. Wonderful. And then also a great thing, I don't have any side effects from the medication. Because usually you know what yeah. happens, they say. I have a lot of friends suffering from mental illness despite the fact that they're taking medication, they still have symptoms. And then, you know, a lot of people uh, uh, have side effects from medication and that's the reason why a lot of people with mental illness don't want to take their medication because sometimes the side effects are even worse than the actual symptoms. <laughs> yes, that's true. But me sitting here, looking at you, talking to you, I don't believe you were homeless. You know you know what I'm trying to say. Someone was like, really, he was homeless? Really, he was mental? No one would believe it. But listening to you and the transformation that you had, I can now understand and believe what you've been through. And there should be some funny moment in your life when you were homeless. Do you have any funny moment? Yeah. Or there are quite a few funny moments and one thing I just wanted to say briefly <laughs> was men my mental illness was an absolute hell. It was hell oh my gosh. every second that I was alive. I wanted to kill myself I want, 
and the depths of my mental illness was horrible. Wow. And I, you know, I, I, there, there are no other words than to say that it was uh, hell, hell on earth. But you know, a lot of things. There were quite a few funny things. Um, one actually was 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 kind of cool because uh, during the time that I was going through my manic phase, I auditioned for a, a musical at the Civic Theater called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Mm -hmm. So I would wear some weird things. Uh, you know, uh, it was Christmas time. I wore a Santa hat, which was not not strange to wear. You know, even sane people yeah. wear a Santa mm -hmm. hat. But I auditioned and did the dance audition, and I was so hyper and so you know active and funny looking and everything that after my dance audition the director said that's the person <laughs> that i want in the musical and i was like hey, hey. <laughs> so did about 25 um, performances and i remember i shaved my head i was bald and uh people loved you know because it was it's such a bright and active um, So musical. when he chose you and he says, "That's how did you feel? I felt great. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm homeless, <laughs> but I'm in a just great musical. We did 25 sold out performances. And um, just, I think that the, the mental illness, the manic phase kept me, um, kept me going. It was some structure for me. Um, <laughs> during, during Christmas time, I rang the bells for the uh -huh. Salvation Army, yeah. and I sang. I was singing songs, and then I did a news release and sent it to all the news agencies. I was Stephen, the singing uh, bell, ring. bell ringer, and you know I would ring, sing. I'm dreaming of a white <laughs> Christmas, and people would you know walk by and they give you know put money in and they they kind of stand around and it's like. If I saw a Hispanic person walk by, going Feliz Navidad, <laughs> Feliz Navidad. <laughs> so. I bet you people enjoyed it because they'll say, "Okay, he's changing his tune according to who I'm yes, passing I by." Yes, I did. You know, older person would come by, I'd sing Bing Crosby. <laughs> You know, and African American people walk by and sing. You know, it's like something. But did that give you kind of a satisfaction? It was fun. I loved it. And the interesting thing about it, that Kmart hired me. <laughs> you know, they hired me, and, and I start working there wow. um, uh, part time. They liked, you know, the the energy and everything. And that is amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. Now I see you have some. It's kind of a gold coin, but it's not. Is the award that you've got? Now this is um, the Conrad N. Hilton Humanitarian Award. Uh, actually, it's called the Humanitarian Prize. I'm now on the uh, board of directors for Clubhouse International, the organization that sees all of the clubhouses Pretty in the world. Heavy. We were recently given this top humanitarian award in the world, Clubhouse International, uh, and uh, we received it in New York uh, several uh, weeks ago. Wow. And so we're, we're, I'm proud to have one of these because, you know, I'm, I'm a success story from the Clubhouse movement. And so um, this means a lot to me. I can see you're getting a bit emotional. Yeah, huh? yeah. It, it, it's something close to your heart. Well, yeah. Even as I talk about it now, you know, just where I've, where I've been, and then to be able to be a board member now, and to go to New York regularly, and to make a difference. Yeah, you're you're a great inspiration to a lot of people that is watching us and seeing what you have been through. Mm -hmm and what are you today mm -hmm. so what would you tell the homeless people out there or any ordinary people who would unfortunately become homeless or have a mental problem what would you say to them well first of all i would say that i really do understand i really understand uh, how it feels to be homeless i understand how it feels to live in a city where um, where you don't feel like you have a friend in the world. I mean, there were times when I was by myself and I was thinking, I, I can't believe I'm from Fort Wayne. I can't believe I was a professional in Fort Wayne or I, I went to high school in Fort Wayne. I can't believe that I have friends and family here because, you know, I was thinking, where, where's everyone at? You know, where's everyone when I need them? But I, I would tell uh, people out there who are homeless with no job or no place to stay is, to, to hang in there and 
if you have dreams, don't let go of them. Don't don't give up on yourself or don't give up on on God, because He loves you, and uh, He um, He cares for you. He really does. And sometimes it doesn't feel like He does. It, it, and I went through periods where I, I felt, God, where are you? But He's there. He's there, and He loves you, and you can still see your dreams come true. So that's I, I just want to encourage them to don't give up and don't take your life because That's not worth it. your life is important and you have a lot of skills talents and abilities that no one else has no no other persons like you you're unique and and you are very special and you have to believe that because it's true i've spoken several times and i'd like to you know i'd, I'd like to continue speaking mm -hmm. to to people and to encourage them and let them know that even if you're going through a mental illness or we all go through some very deep hard times um, I am a living um, testament that um, you can come through it going through all this and learning more about you you're such a fascinating person you're a great inspiration for me and uh, with your message out there to anybody from that little to old what would be your one and one only inspirational message? My one and only inspirational message is to get to know God. Get to know God because He knows all about you. He knows what makes you tick. He knows what makes you happy. He knows what... He has the blueprint of you. And if you connect with Him, mm -hmm. then you'll learn about you. Thank you so much for being here and Thank giving you. me your time. Thank you, Mr. Stephen. Thanks. Thank you, audience, for watching this show tonight. It has inspired me. And from his message, hopefully everybody is being inspired out there watching this show. Thank you. And remember, everyday people are worth more than gold. Hold on. That wraps up this week's edition of The Goldie Show. Don't miss next week's show when Goldie meets with Lori Hunt of the Fort Wayne Sexual Assault Treatment Center. Check out The Goldie Show here every Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock. The Goldie Show, where we believe that everyday people are worth more than gold. I'm Sarah Ellsworth Hoffman. See you soon.